When Russia launched its new Oreshnik ballistic missile, Ukraine first reported it was attacked by an ICBM. Later in the day, US officials said it was not an ICBM. The Pentagon described it as an intermediate-range missile, but additional information suggests Oreshnik is not like IRBMs that other countries use. This video will explain the confusion, explain what Oreshnik is, how dangerous it is, and why it's indeed closer to an ICBM when it comes to lethality. First thing to understand is that the definitions of what constitutes an intercontinental range or intermediate range missile are arbitrary. Luckily, the 1988 Intermediate Range Treaty between the US and Soviet Union defined the ICBM range between the two. Furthermore, Pentagon's Missile Defense Agency says this, ICBM is a missile reaching 5500 kilometers or more. IRBM is a missile reaching between 3,000 and 5,500 kilometers. A medium-range ballistic missiles reach between 1,000 and 3,000 kilometers. That Pentagon announcement about the Russian missile also showed another piece of information that explains the confusion. The US said the Oreshnik missile is based on the Russian RS-26 missile. Now, what is or was RS-26, also called Rubish? We say was because it was at one point in development. In the early 2010s, it performed several test flights. One of those flights was measured to reach 5,800 kilometers, technically putting it just over the IRBM threshold and into the ICBM category. Arguably, Russia designed the missile that way so it can say it technically abides by the INF treaty limit of 5,500 kilometers. But by 2018 or so, news of Rubish development ceased and Russian TASS news agency then ran a piece saying that its development was postponed until 2027 due to lack of funds. But those plans might have changed since then, especially because of the new political landscape since the start of the war. Perhaps work was restarted or perhaps it went into another direction, modifying the design for a different set of missions. Budanov, Ukraine's chief of military intelligence, said that Oreshnik is the name of the developmental program and that the missile, once it enters active service, will bear the name Kedr or Cedar Tree. Both Putin, the Pentagon and Ukraine agree on one thing. The missile was a test article taken from an unfinished developmental program. So, what is Oreshnik? Maybe it's quite close to what Rubesh was, or it's slightly different. Problem is, no one really knows much about Rubesh itself, and no images of it exist. But we do know Rubesh itself was based on RS-24 Yars, a true ICBM with a range of over 11,000 kilometers and carrying multiple nuclear warheads. And we know that in 2013, a Russian general confirmed Rubesh had fewer stages than Yars. Basically, to achieve the huge range, ICBM designers resort to multi-staging. Yars has the first biggest stage, then second and third stages, all to be discarded during boost. Then the warhead bus is aided by the post-boost vehicle, before the warheads are separated to begin their final descent onto a target. The first stage of the Yars is the biggest at nearly 1.9 meters wide. The rest of the missile is narrower, but not much around 1.6 meters at the warhead bus level. What seems likely for both Rubesh and possibly Oreshnik, if it is indeed so similar, is that the third booster stage was deleted. That's basically what Soviets did in a previous generation of IRBMs made out of ICBMs, specifically RSD-10. RSD-10 was an intermediate-range Soviet missile from the 1970s. It was derived from the RT-21 ICBM, both missiles were developed concurrently and entered service around the same time. The RSD-10 simply had the last booster stage removed. Basically, Oreshnik is likely to have a true ICBM-sized warhead bus, meaning size to carry several nuclear warheads. Yars is often estimated to carry 400 kiloton warheads, but rumors exist it can carry more. To put that in proper context, when the term intermediate-range ballistic missile is used, most often the missile is visibly smaller. That's because most such missiles are designed so they reach 3 or 4,000 kilometers carrying a single warhead. Chinese DF-26, a prime example of a modern IRBM, is visibly smaller than Rubesh and thus likely Oreshnik. 
with a big first stage booster section and a smaller second stage, which also does post-boost maneuvering. At the warhead level, the missile is probably just 0.6 meters wide and not 1.6 meters like Rubej or plausibly Oreshnik. All that explains the lethality of the Oreshnik. It explains all those videos of warheads arriving on target. It is very apparent the missiles carried six separate warheads, which may mean that Yars can actually carry six warheads, or it may mean Rubej and Oreshnik were further modified to carry a few more of smaller warheads. Keep in mind, today's nuke warheads are already very compact. A US MK4 re-entry vehicle with a 100 kiloton W76 warhead in service from 1978 weighs just 360 pounds and is basically just a foot and a half in diameter. What also makes it plausible that those six individual warheads were not so small is the fact that somewhere along the trip each warhead further released six submunitions. That's a total of 36 munitions carried by the missile. There is no way of knowing precisely how large those submunitions are, but it's unlikely we're talking about elements of more than several inches in diameter. While it's fairly clear in the videos that the test article missile that landed on Dnipro did not actually have live warheads with explosive, it's plausible each submunition in the final version of the missile might have a hundred kilos worth of explosive, possibly more. The missile that hit Dnipro plausibly had just warhead mock-ups to simulate true warhead weight for aerodynamic purposes. While there is no indication the Russian missile used a gliding body warhead, there exist concepts where missile warheads contain separate submunitions, not just simple bomblets, but proper bomb-like munitions, like in the concept from this year's Zhuhai Airshow from China. The whole idea behind the Oreshnik missile project seems to be to cover a fairly wide area with lethal blasts or fragments. Problem with super-fast ballistic missiles is that they don't have as much time and opportunity to correct course using satellite guidance. The warhead bus likely has some course correction engines, but still, at those speeds it's plausible the precision is not within just a few meters like a subsonic bomb could achieve. A nuclear warhead doesn't care if it misses by a dozen meters. But with conventional warheads, to compensate for the greater imprecision, multiple submunitions are used. Oreshnik is also likely very expensive, basically like your regular ICBM. US Minuteman ICBM cost 7 million apiece without warheads in the 1970s. Today that would cost probably over 40 million with some conventional warheads. A more modern missile like the Trident is closer to 70 million apiece. Russian salaries are much, much cheaper, but still, even if mass-produced in the hundreds, Oreshnik missile would likely cost around 10 million dollars equivalent in rubles. And given that current production volumes are super low, actual current per missile cost is likely to be double if not triple. That's getting closer to what Russia is paying for a high-end aircraft like Su-35. Oreshnik is a weapon to be used against most time critical of targets, something that positively has to be hit within just 15 minutes of the order to be hit. An Iskander ballistic missile may sometimes be in position to do such a job, but oftentimes there may be no launchers close enough to target. Kinjals launched from MiG-31 are even worse, as planes need time to take off. Zircon hypersonic missiles are a bit better, but they too may not always be around, and may be easier to intercept. But a missile like Oreshnik, it has everything. Its range is likely enough to have it stationed deep inside Russia and still hit anywhere in Ukraine. It's fast enough that it can more or less reliably evade lower level missile defenses such as Patriot Pack 3 and Thad. And if it happens that it overflies a higher end defense system like SM3, its multiple warheads give it better chances that not all warheads would get intercepted. And trajectory submunitions are likely ejected fairly close to the target, but still probably outside the reach of a short-range system like Pac-3. So perhaps even those submunitions can complicate matters further. Putin mentioned Mach 10 when talking about Oreshnik, but that's just a general speed class remark. Ukraine said they measured the missile speed to be over 13,000 km per hour. That's around Mach 13 at high altitude. 
that's plausibly the booster burnout speed, after which the speed starts dropping off a bit for any ballistic missile. Then, as the missile goes past its apogee, speed starts picking up, once again reaching a similar speed before re-entry into thicker parts of the atmosphere, where it quickly loses speed. It's worth pointing out that if the launch was on a very high arc, the burnout speed would have been a Mach or so less than the common trajectory burnout speed. So maybe Oreshnik can, on a longer range shot, reach over Mach 14. Again, to put those speeds in context, a true ICBM has more stages, more thrust over time and thus it reaches even higher speeds. US Minuteman 3 ICBM has a Mach 23 booster burnout speed. Russian Iskander short-range ballistic missile tops out at around Mach 7. Chinese DF-26, an intermediate-range missile, should top out at around Mach 18, given its range. Rubish missile, which was barely of intercontinental range, should top out at Mach 21. So the fact Mach 13 was observed and Mach 14 was imputed for Oreshnik may point to the post-boost vehicle with warheads being much heavier than whatever was planned for Rubish. Or perhaps that the missile was further modified, losing another booster stage, thus making it even shorter ranged, and in the process making it slower. That would make it cheaper, but more importantly, it would allow it to reach short distances in a more depressed trajectory, instead of going in a high arc. That in turn shortens flight time, leaving the enemy less time to react, and doesn't allow the enemy to use distant radars to track the missile in flight. With ballistic missiles, range very much depends on speed, and speed can in turn tell us much about the missile's max range. If Mach 13 to 14 was indeed the missile's designed booster burnout speed, that might suggest the max range with a heavy payload is around 2000 km. Payload is crucial here, as a much lighter payload allows a missile to reach a higher speed, thus allowing it to reach longer distances. Who knows if the payload shown is just one of several variants available and planned. But that estimate may be deceiving. It's also strange that Ukraine said the missile took 15 minutes to come from Russia's Astrakhan region to Dnipro. Knowing from those velocity graphs that the missile likely took 100 seconds to reach its burnout speed, then coasted between Mach 11 to Mach 13 for most of its trajectory, it plausibly flew an arc that was some 3300 kilometers long, with an apogee, meaning top altitude, of little over 1600 kilometers. That alone suggests its max range could be around 4000 kilometers, with given payload. To muddle the waters even more, a limited number of news outlets said the missile flew for under 5 minutes, which would change the calculus to an arc being 1100 km long, with apogee of just 500 km. That implies a much shorter max range, of possibly just 1500 km. Important to note is that ranges are variable and heavily payload dependent. With a lighter payload, range can be longer. Example is given of Chinese IRBM, where changing the payload from half a ton to two tons lowers missiles' range by 25%. With 36 submunitions, Oreshnik's payload might be even heavier. Basically, people in the know probably haven't shared enough data with context, and the media might have misinterpreted some data. What matters is this. It was a new weapon, one still in development available maybe in token numbers to Russia, and even when development completes, it's gonna be a very very expensive weapon, ICBM sized missiles usually are. In the end, Oreshnik is both an ICBM in terms of payload capability and not an ICBM in terms of range. It's definitely very lethal and hard to intercept, but perhaps not as fast as other missiles with lighter payloads, with its warheads easier to be intercepted individually, but with so many in the air, at least some might come through. For Russia, Oreshnik was about a political message. We have it, it can be used, both as a conventional and nuclear delivery system. That's a message in itself, no way of knowing what kind of warhead the missile carries, which is a dangerous move no way for Ukraine to intercept it, very little time for anyone to react. But militarily, in the context of war in Ukraine, it's not very useful. 
too few missiles probably exist. They are far too expensive for 99.9% .9 of possible targets, and they're not gonna make a difference on the battlefield, unless Russia starts hunting Patriot Sams with them. Assuming Oreshnik's average range is 3000 kilometers, they should be able to reach essentially entire Europe and, for example, entire Alaska. They are more of a weapon that we may see if the whole war ever escalates to something even more dangerous. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.